Hello there, we've been asked a simple question, how can we make alternative takes without having to keep pressing that alt button? Because obviously if you're playing the keyboard, you don't really have any free hands. Well, we think we've come up with a solution. What we have is we use this very small amount of automation data to send a signal via the EMI out of reason where we hit a loop back MIDI which then we're going to bring back into reason and capture that using the surface controller. Now we're dealing with pure MIDI data we can actually uh, remote map that controller to the alt button. The only thing you need to just watch out for is obviously the control CC is 00, zero which would be exactly the same as the EMI. Now of course it doesn't have to be 0, it can be any number between uh, 0 and 127. You just need to find one which is free and is not going to affect uh, any other instruments within reason. Okay, let's have a look at this from uh, a point of view that you've never actually done it before. So what we've got here I'm just going to make sure that my Thor is actually highlighted. I'm going to crank this value up, which is like a CV value. And basically, so we've got CC0, and then that has a value. So CC0 has a value of 39 now, and as I move it up, it goes up and up and up. When this CC0 gets to 127, it's going to create a new track lane. There, new track lane. So every time I bounce this onto 127, I don't have to go back down to zero. I need to go from 127 to 126. And there we go, that's all I need to do. And every time I do that, I get a new track lane. Um, and if I had this, had the MIDI focus, every time this got to 127, that one gets a new track lane. So whatever has the focus is going to get the, the new track lane. Now, quite simply then, what we need to do is automate this. So we can obviously come here and say, Edit automation is going to put an automation layer in there for us. Let's just quickly clean some of these up. So it's getting a little bit messy here. Um, oh, in fact, there's another way as well. So from here, we've got this uh, track parameter automation, which was dropped down, and we can just choose it from there. So there's two different ways you can obviously get to that data. And of course, what we want to do is we're going to draw just a little bit of automation data right at the end of the track. Now, we can move this right a bit closer to the edge. If you go too far or, you know, really, really close to the edge, uh, for some reason it doesn't pick up. What we need to do now is just double click on it and just type in a bit of value. Ah, yes, there's a good one for you beginners to watch out for. And it doesn't really matter where I click it here. Uh, so I'm just going to put one value in and then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to make sure it's 127 by typing in 127 there. And it's at the top. The one little got jar I should really point out on is, hey, wherever I leave that knob, over here, okay, when I create my automation lane, that's going to be the default value. Okay, 116 is not an issue. I'm actually going to set it to zero. Um, if it was happens to be 127, then this would never have effect because it's always 127, and even when it goes back to the beginning, it's 127, so it never have actually any effect. Um, so make sure, really, because we're dealing with CC, I'll always set that to zero. Or to the base value. If I know I'm always wanting 50, then I'll sell it to 50. Then if I've got variations around it, I'll draw that in. So now we can obviously test this quite easily by coming here and just hit and play. Uh, and actually, let's give our for the focus. So when we come along, it should come in, and there we go, we've got our new lane. Okay, let's just cheat a bit. There we go. And there's our new track lane every single time. It's that straightforward. Okay. So really, that's about it for now. I hope you enjoyed this and find it useful, and happy CVing.